When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about the formation and the effects of acid rain. We're going to, in this video, we're going to cover the next dot point, which is quite related. And it's again about sulfur dioxide and the oxides of nitrogen. I'll read the actual dot point. It says, analyze information from secondary sources to summarize the industrial origins of sulfur dioxide and oxides of nitrogen and evaluate the reason for concern about the release into the atmosphere. So two parts for summarize the origins and then evaluate the reasons why we should be concerned. Now I'll start with the actual first part, which is to summarize the origins. And this is here is an actual statistics from Port Phillips. And Port Phillips is in Victoria in Australia. And this is obviously not too busy. So it's more of a rural or a smaller place in terms of scape compared to maybe say Mexico City or Tokyo or Shanghai. And these cities obviously have millions of people. Port Phillips is not that big on that scale. And this is the actual origins of their pollutants. So for example, sulfur dioxide and the oxides of nitrogen. So for example, for sulfur dioxide, 38% come from industry in terms of the sources. 2% comes from transport and 60% from other. So for example, things like we said, the bacterial decomposition and the like also contribute to sulfur dioxide. Now for nitrogen oxides, 4% comes from industry, 72% comes from transport, and 24% comes from other. So things like lightning storms, for example, also cause a bit of it, but 72 from transport. Now those values might be a bit different if we looked at like a city like Mexico City or Tokyo, that they might have more of a transport and more of industry because it's very, very busy and very many traffic -y situations where you have lots of pollutants, whereas obviously Port Phillips is less so. But still, we've got quite a bit from transport and industry, even in Port Phillips. And this asks us to summarize the industrial origins of sulfur dioxide and oxide nitrogen. So we go industrial means, in this case, both the industry and the transport. These two are the ones we have to summarize. So for sulfur dioxide, which is this here, sulfur dioxide, the origins are for industry, from an industrial point of view, coal burning. Remember, the coal itself had a bit of sulfur in it. And that released a lot of it. So coal burning was for energy. Metal smelting, so for example, when we had a mineral which had sulfur but also maybe copper in it, but we wanted to get that pure copper, we would use metal smelting to get that copper, but as a process we would also release CO2, SO2. And oil refining, because as I said, oil also has a bit of that sulfur in it. So when we refine that oil, we release a bit of oil, we release a bit of sulfur in the process. So oil refining, that's for making petrol, for example. Or transport, and again, this is so this was the vast majority. So this is forty percent of the total came from Port Phillips, came from industry, and then two percent came from transport. I think like ships, planes, and cars, because I mentioned earlier that petrol itself has a bit of that sulfur in it as well. So when they combust their petrol, they would release a tiny bit of sulfur as well. But yeah, when it says you need to summarize industrial, think of both the industry, industry here, so these ones, but also transport ones. And you know, have a rough idea of how much, like, where's more of it released. So, 40% is released in industry, whereas only 2% is released from transport. For the example of Port Phillips, but it'd be similar to most other areas as well. Now, for the oxides of nitrogen, industry is oil refining and coal burning. So, similar for sulfur dioxide, but the amount is very different. So, here only 4% come from industry, whereas 72% come from transport. And that's mainly from our trucks and from our cars. If you remember the equation that I gave in a couple of years back, we had N2, which was gas in our atmosphere, nitrogen gas, plus O2, gas in our atmosphere and oxygen. That combines to form two moles of nitrogen monoxide. Uh, that's where this comes from, this nitrogen monoxide, from the combustion of N2 plus O2. And what, what does that have to do with cars? Well, that needs to have high temperatures. And high temperatures are usually present in the engine of a car. So this happens in the engine of a car. And the exhaust pipe releases some of this monoxide into our atmosphere. But yeah, so these were the actual summaries of it. So remember, the vast majority for nitrogen monoxide comes from transport. The vast majority f comes from industry for sulfur dioxide. And remember some of these sources as well. 
Uh, second part was evaluate the reasons, like evaluate the reasons for concern. And these are some of the reasons. We said, mentioned last video acid rain. This was our major reason because both nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and sulfur trioxide, all of these caused acid rain. And what did acid rain do? Acid rain attacked marble, so it destroyed our old buildings, especially the, you know, the Roman buildings or the Greek buildings, which were made out of marble. It also corrodes metal. There's obviously a problem when it comes to bridges and any other structure which is made out of metal. It kills organisms, changes the pH, and all actual organisms have their ideal pH. So when it changes the pH, the organisms often can't survive. It damages plants because the cuticles of the leaves actually fall off. And that means the plants die after a while as well. And also, all the actual animals that eat the plants are also affected. Plus, it changes the pH of soil. Remember, all different trees and plants have their optimum pH for it to grow properly. So that pH changed by the actual acid rain. That means the actual plants and trees can't grow properly anymore. So these are some of the problems that were associated with acid rain. And obviously, nitrogen monoxide, and not, so this one, nitrogen monoxide, NO, did not cause acid rain because it was neutral. But nitrogen monoxide usually made nitrogen dioxide happen. So nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, sulfur trioxide, these were the problem ones when it comes to acid rain. But also there were other concerns. So for example, lots of photochemical smog appeared. And that's when sunlight comes in contact with some of these actual pollutants. And that causes yeah, this, which is photochemical smog. So we can't see far. It's very hazy. And the reason why it's so hazy is because there's lots of these different chemicals in our atmosphere, such as sulfur dioxide, and then nitrogen monoxide and dioxide. And that causes a few problems. Obviously, visibility is reduced. That's a one problem. But also, it causes respiratory problems. Sulfur dioxide does. And that's especially problem problematic for people who suffer from asthma. They already have problems. But once the smog comes around, they have even more problems. And obviously, you can die if you have an asthma attack, a really bad one. So sulfur dioxide could be a problem for people suffering from asthma. And also, nitrogen monoxide causes the irritation of eyes. So people who live in that smoggy area might have more irritated eyes, which means that we have, overall, we have um, people suffering from yeah, not feeling well generally doing everyday life. So these are some of the actual reasons why we should be concerned. And it says evaluate the concerns. So uh, look at the concerns and say, should we be worried? And yes, we should be worried. So we should be worried. And we should do something about it. We should make sure we have policies in place, which we do in Australia. In Australia... Pollution-wise, is not a big problem, but for all countries will make sure that they look at their actual exhaust. So, for example, that cars produce less nitrogen monoxide, make some way that we can reduce the emissions to make sure this doesn't happen. And especially countries like China and um, Mexico or India, like the, the countries that are developing quite fast, need to make sure that they don't develop so fast that they can't deal with the smog they create. But yeah, overall, we should be concerned and we should have things in place to make sure we have it reduced again. And Australia does that quite well as well. We hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.